Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to be here today to talk about Earth. Basically, no Earth, no life. No Earth, no life. So it's sort of a combination. You get the term echo. The problem started right from here because the word echo means home. Home means here in this context, the entire Earth. And if I study about the Earth, it is called as ecology. If I evaluate the earth, it becomes economy. Logi is study, nomi is numbers. The problem today is a clash between these two, ecology versus economy. And here what burns is actually ecology. Coming to climate change, which people have been talking about, and the moment we talk about climate change, people say restoration is possible. We do soil restoration, water restoration, lake restoration, all types of restoration people talk about. But please understand that if a person is traveling by a two-wheeler, meets with an accident, and his leg is amputated, if I can give back the original leg, that is called as restoration, which we cannot. At the moment, we give them an artificial leg, and that is rehabilitation. What we do for our ecosystems is only rehabilitation because human beings cannot restore nature. Nature alone restores nature. And this process we can do is by the process of mitigation. Probably that's the reason why we are all going to talk to each other today. Mitigation is a process where we move towards restoration, whereas adaptation is something like, I just don't care. It's time that we mitigate. And today, predictions are very, very poor because natural resources are diminishing. And probably in the course of time, human beings will be consuming cultured or cultivated meat, high protein insects, seaweed, algae, and other things the way things are moving. This is because change in annual mean temperature is happening and change in annual mean precipitation, rainfall, is decreasing. When these things decrease and water demand is increasing, the crops are all going to be produced and we are going to face a problem. Okay, so what can we do? We have to take care of soil health. Uh, you know, like uh, people say that uh, they study something, they become something, the same thing happened to me probably because mathematics never entered my head. And my teacher in class five said that I have clay in my head rather than brain. So I became a soil biologist. <laughs> so soil is more important than you think. 2015, United Nations declared the year of the soils. It is 10 years since we have done nothing. My work on research, this is my 50th year of teaching. I started teaching in 1974. And in 1978-79, I started working with soils. And in those soil research, what I understood was soil, is it a mineral matter or a living one? Because, you know, like we teach children wrongly. We tell children that living, non-living, we classify them. There's a problem we have created right from the young days. We tell air is not living. We call ourselves living. But we never tell the children that if we remove the non-living air from my body, I also become non-living. In the same component, if I go with this soil, the moment I started describing soil as a living organism, people started asking me, Soil, does it have a digestive system? Well, if I walk on the road and if I find a dead animal, for example, a dog is lying over there, dead. One day, two days, three days, it stinks. I dig a pit, I bury the dog, cover it up. It doesn't stick outside. What's happening inside? Decomposition. Who is doing it? Microorganisms. Who is digesting in our intestine? Microorganisms. Logically, you can say, the soil has a digestive system. They asked me whether the soil has a respiratory system. Just like we take in oxygen, give out carbon dioxide, soil also takes in oxygen, gives out carbon dioxide. Then they asked me whether it has a circulatory system. Well, I walk on the road, I get hurt in my leg. The doctor gives me a tablet. I swallow the tablet. I put the tablet in my mouth. I don't feed it to my toe. How does it reach there? The circulatory system takes it over there. Right? In the same way, you have plants at home. We don't pull up the plant every day and feed the roots. We put it on the soil. Water and nutrients go to the roots. So soil logically has a circulatory system. They asked me whether the soil has an excretory system. Just like we go to the restroom and throw away the urine, which is full of urea, any soil which has lots of salt in it, you would have seen the salt is brought above the soil and thrown out. Soil logically has an excretory system. They asked me whether the soil has a reproductive system. Just like in vitro fertilization, even after fertilizing a zygote, you require a mother's uterus where the zygote has to be implanted. In the same way, whatever modern technology can produce tissue culture, that plant has to be planted in the soil for it to grow. 
So soil logically has a repetitive system. The highest thing was when they asked me whether soil has a brain. Now that was a complication. Yeah. To me, to my knowledge, can soil think? Yeah, dig a pit, put any organic material into it, it decomposes. But put a seed, it germinates. See, a soil knows what it has to decompose, what it has to germinate. Soil has the fundamental principle of acknowledging and appreciating nature. So this type of a soil, soil is life. There's life in the soil. There are two important organisms which help in the soil ecosystem. One are the earthworms, the others are the termites. Because today, soil compaction is happening because of mismanagement of agriculture. We find that the soil organisms are reducing in number. Organic matter should be there. The aroma of the soil, the aroma of the soil is diminishing. Organic matter in our country should be 2 to 5%. But in India today, the national average is less than 0.3%. So on one side, people talk about soil fertility. Where fertility got re, re, or actually related to fertilizers that are being added over there. How much of nitrogen is there? How much of phosphate is there? How much of potassium is there? Whereas we who work on non-synthetic chemical applications, we relate it as soil health. Soil health. And soil health, when it comes, today, nutrients are depleted in the soil. Because there are no nutrients in the soil, the food that is being grown, whether it's crops or fruits or vegetables, they do not have enough nutrients. So what are we trying to do? Fortified food. Is fortified food the answer? No. We have to take care of mother soil, right? So today, land degradation is happening due to different processes. But, sorry. Vermitech, using earthworms for soil. This is one of the main systems which could be followed. These are local earthworms, traditional earthworms found in the soils. In any soil, any good soil will have worms on the surface of the soil. We call them as AP Jake. Don't get upset about scientific terms. Jake is derived from the term geo. Geo means earth. AP means above, which lives on the above surface of the soil. The second are endojaic, which live inside the soil. And those which keep moving up and down. The wanderers are the anesics, the intermediates, which are very important for the soil. These are our traditional earthworms in India. These are the castings which they produce as fertilizers. These are local earthworms which actually make the soil healthy. And you find during rains, most of the earthworms come away and they drown because the water clogs the pores and there's no air going inside. These are the things which happen over there. This is our local earthworm which can be used for composting in India, Perionix. These are European earthworms that are also used for composting. These are used in South India as utilis UGD for composting purposes. It's very simple to do composting. You have a, a temperature reduced dung, introduce the worms, and they beautifully multiply and beautifully grow. Now, how do I do composting? It's very simple. It's very simple. That's why we compost, right? Please remember that. Greener the leaf, more nitrogen. Drier the leaf, more carbon. And carbon-nitrogen ratio should be less than 30 to 1. That's why nature always drops leaves in both the combinations. You always find interesting things in nature. And we find that uh, these are all the carbon materials. These are all the nitrogen materials which you observe in nature, at homes, for composting purposes. We just set it up, start a unit. And the best source of organic material in Indian conditions is diluted cow dung. We don't require to buy any microorganisms. So we use diluted cow dung, set up a unit, loosely cover it up with a polythene, loosely cover it with polythene, and then the temperature inside multiplies itself, increases. Once the temperature increases to about 60 to 62 degrees Celsius, then we turn it over when steam is produced. And then gradually the labor comes down. We take it out sieve it with coarse sieve, put it in a container, introduce the earthworms, and earthworms produce vermicompost. And this vermicompost is harvested. This is what we have been doing for the government of Tamil Nadu. We try to demonstrate. We try to do this thing to people. People are trying to adapt it to a large extent. And while doing this composting, we came up with this sort of a model. This is a model designed by us, which could be used by people. And this is the model which is today used by many people throughout the country and which is being also promoted. It's a very simple unit because most of the waste management sites are handled by women folk. And it's very difficult for them to lift the weight and put it inside. So we designed a system where we have a three-sided wall where the people can walk inside and do the work themselves. 
these are simple de decentralized units for composting. We started with uh, wooden sticks, but today we use a lot of uh, new material which comes in. But the simplest thing for any rural area would be to design an area with about three feet diameter. Three feet diameter, make a rough circle over there, dig a pit, introduce any organic matter inside, gradually decomposes on the inner side of the mound where you find the yellow arrow, plant some of the greens and on the outer side, vegetables. So in rural area, we improve soil nutrition and improve their health nutrition by providing good food. These are all simple technologies which we can do and we're trying to train people through different sources, trying to give people different uh, ideas so that people can have good food. Mulching the soil is one very important component which I want everybody to understand. In the case of mulching the soil, the moment we say the mulch layer, the world thinks about plastics. Plastic is not a good mulch. A mulch should be an organic mulch, which actually gives nutrition. When the soil is covered with a mulch, you find it's whether with straw, along with rain and sunshine, both of them act together. Fermentation takes place, carbonization takes place, and this helps in soil organisms multiply. In making soil lively, in making soil interesting, and these worms start making burrows. That's the circulatory system of the soil. The, based on which we developed the vermi wash, different units, different sizes, whichever the people want, they could work on it. Panchakavya is one very interesting nutrient which can be used by farmers, by homemakers. Dr. Nadrajan is one of the pioneers for working on it. You prepare Panchakavya, very simple procedure. Anybody can do it. We can also produce simple things from household vegetables and fruits which are overripe, can be used as excellent fertilizers. Fish amino is one of the excellent tonics which could be used on soils. Farmers effective microorganisms, fish amino combinations and also other combinations which could be used. The simplest combination which I find is banana peels. For any homemaker who is having a home garden, the best thing you can do is, after eating banana, put the peels in a bottle, add water, leave it for about three, four days. Decant the water, spray it on your plants, dilute it and spray it on your plants. Excellent flowers, full of potassium. Those who eat eggs, take the eggshells, slightly roast them because there is a sort of an albumin inside. Roast them slightly, crush them, put them in a bottle, add vinegar, ordinary vinegar. Don't ask me about cedar vinegar, this vinegar, that vinegar, ordinary vinegar. Vinegar is acetic acid. This has calcium carbonate. The moment I add it up, it starts bubbling. And within two days, all the nutrients which are found inside the shell come into the liquid. Use it. So that's Panchakavya. My thing is vermi wash. We have worked on it. I'm not just talking out of passion. The names you find at the base are my research students who worked. I always acknowledge them for the work which they have done with me. We have worked at the anatomy level of plants. We have worked at the chromosome level of plants. We have worked at the molecular structures of these substances. Though these substances look simple, they are remarkable. They are marvelous. Anybody can use. Sir, pesticide. I get pests. Pests, the most important professor in any rural area is Professor Goat. Yes. Take goat for a walk. Goat eats all sorts of animals. It eats all sorts of plants. The plants which a goat does not eat has pest repellent properties. Very simple. There's a reason why we call it as Aada Toda. In my native language, Tamil, this is called as Aada Toda because Aada Toda Adadu, goat doesn't touch. Very simple pest repellents can be prepared, which we are teaching rural people in a large extent. Different types of pest repellents can be prepared. But the problem today with increasing temperatures, C4 plants are going to survive. C3 plants will have a problem. Rice, wheat are going to suffer. Millets will survive. And people ask me, how much of soil is required if I had to grow a plant? Because I live in apartments. Just to grow mint, you require only four inches of soil. To grow fenugreek, which we call it commonly as methi, and fenugreek, you require just a sort of a plastic box, which could be uh, a sweet box on which you can grow fenugreek. Today, we teach school children to grow them in coconut shells. Very simple. Very simple process. Always remember that when I walk in the rain, I hold an umbrella. Water falls around the umbrella. If I don't have an umbrella, I stand under the shade of a tree. 
water falls a few drops on me but falls around the tree why should water fall around the tree water falls around the tree because the roots which drink are there so where am i supposed to water the trees where the canopy ends not near the trunk which we do normally make this mistakes so let's move from crop centric to farmer centric agriculture technology in agriculture i hope you got my point because technology should assist the farmer not try to replace the farmer the problem today is some people want permaculture some want biodynamic some want sustainable some want natural some want organic but what we should move towards is non synthetic chemical non poisonous farming and that should be a wonderful approach for us so let's reworm the world today when it rains water does not infiltrate when worms come and multiply burrows will be formed and water will come in and that will improve water that was the first meeting where namalwar bernard and i had this in 83 84 our initial programs when we started reaching for people the first procedure on vermi composting released for the world technically that was vermi wash when we discovered it in 95 and today when people talk about terrace gardens we started it as veggies on the rooftop in 1999 always remember ladies and gentlemen that's heart and where should your heart be in the earth and to conclude one very interesting word what soil is speaking soil is telling to us what is soil telling us do not show any favor to me that would be the greatest favor you can show to me if at all you wish to favor me please allow me to live so let us all put our hands together to see to it that we have a wonderful soil for the future and we leave behind a wonderful legacy for the generation which is going to come next thanks very much ladies and gentlemen good luck